Hey y'all, welcome back to the Triple C Effect. This is Christ Cooking and Conversations with your girl, Candice. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Triple C Effect. Today, we have LaDonna. Hello, and Candice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously today is a conversation um, and we're going to talk about the value in being yourself. Um, I chose LaDonna for this because she is the type of person since I've known her to just always show up as herself and be true to who she is and just to be authentic in, in who God created her to, to be. So, yes. So, the first question is, how do you know who you are? Can you elaborate? It's just kind of like, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're like, I don't know who I am. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know, I don't know what I like. But how is, I guess, discovering yourself? Because I feel like everybody has to discover who they are just because of a lot of different factors in their life and stuff like that. So how did you come to know who you are? Mm, interesting question. It's a layered answer. Um, And the reason why is because, you know, first and foremost, as a believer of Christ, as believers, we have a tendency to say, I know who I am and whose I am. You know, I heard that a lot growing up. I know who I am and whose I am. And I was like, okay. But, you know, I find myself saying that, too. Like, I know who I am and I know whose I am. I don't know all about me because I am forever growing and changing and adjusting and fine tuning. And our father is fine tuning me. Mm. And so because he is, I just focus on being obedient. And that's who I am. Mm. And I'm obedient because of whose I am. And my obedience allows me to step out of the way. Mm. So I'm not thinking about like, well, who am I and how do I fit into this world and how do I belong in this world? Because I'm not worried about belonging in this world. I'm worried about being obedient and allowing our Heavenly Father to use me however he sees fit. Mm. So does that answer your question? That does. It it makes a lot lot of sense because, you know, as you say, you don't focus on trying to fit into world into the work world, but just to focus on God. Yeah. Like preventing what He's telling you to do, and then it's kind of like, okay, let me just let me just go. And right. Whatever happens, happens. Right. What is the key to identity? Well, like to knowing your identity, which is why I said I think you answered it because you was like. You know, just focusing on, on God and doing what key. Well, what do you mean by what is the key to my identity? Not to your identity, but to knowing your identity. So what is the key to knowing your identity and who you are? Okay, so I think that the way that we approach life we have to filter it through circumstances right and we look at so many different areas of our lives and we're like oh I have to make sure I do this thing in this area of my life and I have to make sure I'm like this here and that you know I sacrifice this here and 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 all of these different things but what I'm finding now and what I'm actually stepping in right now is kind of the idea of recognizing my power, which is that Christ already lives in me. And that has opened up so much for me. So the key to finding my identity is that I don't identify with anything. Mm. I'm open. I'm open because if I, the only thing that I identify with is being a child of God. Mm. that's it right because anything can change and that's the reality and it can be exciting you know change can be exciting but can also be 
an adjustment. Um, I am a mom, you know, to a toddler. God forbid that role changes because something could happen. I am a wife. God forbid that title can change because something happens. I am an actor. God may tell me you are no longer going to do that thing. I'm not committed to the title yeah. of who I am. And so, because then that becomes my identity. So my only identity is being a child of God. And so whatever he puts me in, then I'm looking forward to doing that task. Mm. And so now I have these different roles of, I am LaDonna. But I act in this role sometimes, and I act in this role sometimes, and I act in that role sometimes, and so on and so on. Okay, okay. Now, because it may it makes me think about what I said in, in the in the other video that I made mm-hmm. when I was talking about you know as as people we could have different roles and what we right. do, right? But those roles don't. Um, those roles, those, those roles don't define us. It's right. Only God, God, God defines us. Right. So. Yeah, yeah girl. Yeah, the question is how you not allow life to, to change you. So how I allow life to not change me, um, that's not really true. I do allow life to change me um, because we experience things in life, right? Mm-hmm. And that's going to produce a change mm-hmm. naturally, right? Um, and I, I think maybe what you're really getting at, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're really getting at is like situations, like maybe difficult situations in life. Okay. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I don't allow those situations to hinder who I am because I've had to go on such a healing journey, you know, and I had to heal things in my mind to, in order to cope. I literally, there was a point in my life where I came down these two crossroads and I was like, hey, if I keep allowing the situations that I experienced in life to affect me, I am going to have a detrimental life. I'm going to have a life that doesn't bring me good. A life that, and and I saw it. It was, and, and this was before my relationship with Christ was anything like it is. I wasn't, I never, I didn't even pray. I wasn't going to church. Like I had no relationship with Christ. He had a relationship with me because he always does, but I, I wasn't recognizing him, you know? Um, and so in that moment, looking back on it, I believe in that moment, God spoke to me and let me know, like, you have a choice here. And it was so clear. And it was like, if you go this way, your life is going to fall apart. But if you go down the path of trying to heal, you will, at that time, I saw it as be successful, right? In this world, like, oh, okay. So I made a conscious decision to say, I have to figure out a way to let things go while still embracing. And I recognized that in that moment, it was like, I had to, I couldn't, I could no longer live life. And I actually was having this conversation with someone yesterday. I was a victim in my life, but I could no longer claim that title. I could no longer claim the title of being a victim. Right. We've all heard it or many people have heard it. You know, people hurt us, but it's Mm. our responsibility to heal. Mm. And this is before it was a thing. Right. (laughs) Before it became a thing on social media. But anyway, the point is, and what I'm saying, it's like. I had to choose not to be a victim, so I had to choose to heal because I knew that it wasn't about anything else or anybody else. It was about like what I went through and how I'm going to grow from it. Like if this situation happened, it happened for a reason. So now how do I get better? So now how do I progress and get better and go to the next step and say, 
okay, this is the type of person I want to be. So if a situation comes up in life now, I take, I evaluate everything, you know, and I'm constantly evaluating myself to say, am I the person that I desire to be? Am I proud of myself? Am I doing my best? I can't show up at 200% every day, but God can. So on those days, I'm like, all right, God, just just carry me through it because uh, you girl, you know, and, and so in those moments when difficult things happen and I experience a loss and I'm dealing with grief, you know, I was in bed for months, you know, like, but I was also in prayer. I was also putting forth an effort mm-hmm. and, and it wasn't because I felt a responsibility to do so, but I knew that if I stayed in that, I wasn't going to grow from it. I had to allow that situation to help me to grow in a new way. That although I didn't want to, I had to allow it to so I can continue forward. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? That that makes sense. It was kind of just like, just always having... So I answer your question. (laughs) No, you did. Okay, okay. (laughs) you, you You allow life not to... To, to change you because you you just kind of put it in perspective yeah in a way and it's kind of like you know I, I always used to say everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. but if I don't look into the reason I will never know why it it, it happens so yeah, yeah. Well, well I will say sometimes I don't know the reason and in c- coming to know our father the way that I do now it's not about the reason. You know, the reason is it's not always it's not always made for me to know the reason, but it is made for me to be obedient because there are certain things that he's doing inside of me through the things that happens in my life. So it's either him who's going to do it inside of me or I'm allowed the enemy to do it inside of me. And if I allow the enemy to do it inside of me, I'm going to go into the way of thinking about what has happened to me yeah. instead of saying, hey, this situation happened and now I'm going to overcome it. Because overcoming is what our father has already done for us, right? Mm-hmm. So if I think about a situation and say, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but I trust you and I need your help. And, and some days that's all it will be. You know, I would be laying in the bed all day, as you know, and I would just be like, I just need you. I just need your help. I would be in tears. I would be crying. I would be like, I'm a mess and I just need help. But I wasn't, I wanted the help. I had the desire for the help. And I knew that I wanted God's help and I didn't want to live in that because then the enemy could take advantage. Mm. And I wasn't going to allow that because we have a choice of free will. And I was talking to Zaire about this yesterday. I was like, you have a choice of free will. The enemy can't make you do anything, but you can allow him to. And I wasn't going to allow him to. Mm. Does it, girl? No, it, 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 it does make sense because it's... Because the way I'm thinking about it, and the way I'm I'm in, interpreting it for 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 me, type of things, kind of like those. It's a part in my book where I say, you know, God can't make you do anything; He can only give you the suggestion. Right. Um. So, um. In that, in that, it's it's it's, it's kind of the same thing. Like nobody can make you do anything; they can influence you too. Yeah type of thing so yeah it's kind of like just kind of putting things into perspective on how you want your life to go yeah type of thing and who you who you allowing in your space and what you allow them to 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 a to, to speak to you and over you thinking about how you said you talked to um Zaire and you know saying you know the enemy can't make you do anything type mm-hmm. of thing so yeah yeah and I and I, I also want to just add to that, if I may, like, just thinking back on, on the original question of showing up as myself in spaces, right? It's like, I can show up as myself in spaces because I'm, I'm in a space, but I'm not going to allow that, I'm not going to conform to that space, mm. right? 
I'm coming in as myself. And I one, one thing that I always knew is that I am bringing a unique trait. Everyone in that space is. So I'm interested to know more about you and you and you and hoping you're interested to know more about me. If you don't, whatever. But I'm coming to the space like, hey, I'm an, I'm a person in this, in this space and there are other people in this space and I want to get to know them and who they are. Right. I'm I'm not here for judgment. I'm not here to to, you know, to to gauge how they should be. But I am here to get to know them. Right. So if I came up in different if I show up in different spaces, rather thinking to myself, I need to step into this space and present myself in the way that I should for this particular room then I'm emptying parts that God has already put in me Mm. that somebody in that room may have needed, Mm. right? And so I'm emptying parts in order to present something that I feel like, hey, this is what I know you would like in this room instead of just being who I am. Because it's that little thing, and I don't know what it is, right? But it's that little thing, that little bit of of this gift or that gift or whatever gift it is or whatever it is they see in me that they need. But if I'm trying to take that away and check that at the door because I need to um, be affiliated with the people in this room and make sure they see me in a particular way, then I'm taking away from what God needs to use me for. Mm. And I always want to be on assignment. So I I have no choice but to just be me. You were talking about how... um not emptying yourself at, at the door to, to, to show up. Yeah, yeah. Type of thing. Because I don't know, as people, we could we could do that. But, you know, you you right in saying that. It's, it's something in, in you that somebody else is, is going to see. Mm-hmm. That they're going to need, type of thing. It was just like a, a reminder to, to me, just to always... Oh yeah. Just, just to, to 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 be <clears throat> myself, even in in in, in all things, really. But yeah. I'm, right now, what I'm thinking most specifically about is um is worship. Mm. Um and you know going back thinking about how Sunday went or whatever. Mm. Cause that was good. Amen. Yeah, Somebody. Amen. Mm. Um, <laughs> that was good, but it was also kind of like um you know I I was it was like. It was just like a, a freedom where I was just like singing and da, 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 yeah, and I was like yes, Lord, yes, you know? yes, and, you know, vibing out yeah. type of thing, and you know that, that that's me. But if if I just get up there and I just not, I don't fully put myself in it. It's just gonna be half half done. It's kind of like so now it's making me think about if I don't show up as myself, am I being obedient to Christ? Mm. Because yeah, yeah, that's it. If if he created me this way, he's expecting me to, to be this way. Mm-hmm. So me not doing something fully is just kind of like, it's me doing it half. And it makes me think about being half obedient. Half obedient is still disobedient. Yeah. Because you're not putting your full, your full, you're not putting you're all into it. Right. And this is what he wanted you to do. This is what he, this he want me to do. So. Right. Like, well, here, you go yeah. check. Like, I'm check you right now. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, because it. It's like I right, gotta do, I gotta check. I right, just uh, I was work this out. <laughs> but um, but yeah, cause what did he check you about? I I missed it. The whole worship thing. And yeah, just going up there and just you know just just singing type of thing. Oh it's yeah, kind of like no, I want you to, to worship me type of thing. Cause sitting there Sunday, it was kind of like I worshiped him like how how I am in, in the house and right. in, in my quiet time and yeah. in those moments where I, I cry in, right. in worship when yeah. I'm sitting in my car because oftentimes I end up sitting in the car because yeah. it's like I, I need the music to surround me yeah. so I'm like in, engulfed in it yeah. type of thing and yeah because I don't know I, I think if I don't think but 
like just the way how loud the music was mm-hmm. Sunday I, I think that plays a part oh. in it it's a part in it for me too because I it's kind of like it became like a a blinder for me mm. it's kind of like I, I'm gonna hear the words I'm gonna hear every everything so what does that but, look like when you are the words you know yeah because when you're when you're singing in the choir, you're seeing the words, mm. right? You are a part of that music. Mm. So that's a small part of how God has elevated you. I don't want to say a small. I'm just saying I don't know fully what it is, right? right. But that's a part of how he's elevated you, too. Because to he was the one who said he wants you singing in this choir. Right. So if you're singing in this choir, right, and you are now the music... He needs you to still worship with the same heart posture, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so then what does that look like if you now are the music? And how do you put on those blinders for yourself to say, all right, God, I'm here, Father. I'm on this stage, but it's me and you. And through that, you're blessing others. Mm-hmm. Good question. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm asking a question. No, you're good. Cause I, this is this is how it's supposed to go. Okay. But I think for for me, it's just kind of having the the focus already before I, I go up there on mm-hmm. on on him and not thinking about everybody else. Because sometimes I get you know caught off guard. Somebody starts singing wrong, and it was just like, oh, okay, are you changing? Do I need to change? It's kind of like just re- remaining in what I know I'm mm-hmm. supposed to do, and in a way, keeping my eyes on 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 him in a way, mm-hmm. and just listening to when when they change type of thing, but not fully getting caught caught off guard by it, and like, oh, well. You know, but it's kind of like that's what practice for. That's what we practice. Like, yeah, you, you already know. Yeah, type of thing. But yeah, just kind of keeping my focus. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay. It's keeping your focus, and that you're you're thinking of how can I worship and be intimate mm-hmm. on stage in front of all of these people instead of thinking about how I need to get this right so that it delivers right to all of these people. But in the delivery to all of those people, what you're ultimately trying to give them is a chance to worship, Yeah. right? So if you're there committing to the worship, then the delivery will already be there, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's funny That's that the message you're saying, yeah. Yeah, it's funny that we're talking about intimacy because remember I was just talking about the podcast oh yeah and he mm-hmm. was just in, in the basement Tim Ross and we just, shout out Tim Ross Tim, y'all gotta listen to that now the yeah. basement Tim Ross yeah that's some good it. stuff on there that's it and he was talking about um you know they were talking about intimacy type of thing and then he was talking about remember you know it's his friend and you know they were talking about like you know having brotherly love for mm-hmm. for each other and you know just really being being in love with, with another person and they were talking about relationships and intimacy and with with intimacy that requires time and yeah um full I gotta read the notes he says um oh oh okay he said, you can't have intimacy without consistency. Yeah. And because mm. he was talking about, you know, it, it takes 10,000 hours to to master something. Then why would we be surprised it takes 10,000 hours to master intimate friendships mm. type of thing? So it kind of just going back to that. Oh, okay, God. What I just heard is kind of like it goes back to my individual time with him mm-hmm. because what I do out there should be should be in overflow what happens in here yeah, yeah. type of thing so a representation uh-huh. mm-hmm. and what I'm thinking about is is you know the heart out of the heart the mouth speaks mm-hmm. so when 
So when it's when something is done on the inside, it should be easy for it to overflow right. on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. So now, now I got homework. <laughs> it, it, it's not homework it's just what i know i'm supposed to do yeah okay god um <laughs> going back when i told you they said that it was you know she said um who is she uh pastor daedra miss daedra what she said to me on sunday when um she was praying for me and she, you know, she was just like, you know, God created you to, to worship, so so do it. And mm-hmm. you know, I took it that you, you already know what to do. You just need to do it. Yeah. It it that kind of translates into everything in, yeah. in life, not just with worship, but you know, I I know I'm supposed to be spending time with God more. So do it. You know what you're supposed to do. So do it. You you know how you wanna do your videos. Yeah. So, so do, do it. it. Yeah. Type of thing. It's kind of like. In don't a way. be just do. Yeah, don't be just do. You know, don't don't do. No, don't. It, it's what you're not in, because it's it don't do just just be type uh, of thing. But in the but being, in order, there's some doing. Yeah. yeah, in the being, there's some doing that yeah. you that you have to do. Yeah. So yeah. My question, I'm going to end with a question okay. for y'all. Okay. In what areas of your life you know you need to be you mm. type of thing? What areas do you in your life do you know that it's kind of like, this is what I was created to do. I have this desire and, and, this, and this passion for this that you know God has, has put in you type of thing that you just need to to do it not halfway but fully because we don't want to be half obedient we want to be full obedient so yeah so with that you know that requires you know self reflection and yeah. prayer really. yeah definitely prayer cause, yeah it does you know god god is going to to guide you mm-hmm. to it and show you like this is what i need you to do same way what happened here today. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, God. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> oh, I got it now. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for um, letting me sit on our couch. Um, we, we live together. So, we at home. We chill. Um, yeah, we chill. That's why we look like this. So, thank you, Candace, for letting me be a guest here today on Christ Cooking and Conversation. And the next time, I look forward to eating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have a little chat and chew. little chat and chew. Chat and I like chew. that. Chat and chew. Nom, nom, <laughs> nom, nom. We're going to cook mm. the food, too. Yum. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Uh, oh, Until yeah. next time. Thank y'all for watching. Um, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Peace. Bye.